pleasure in you know introducing mr hari ayappan so as a part of you know tsm alumni webinar series uh, thank first of all thank you uh, mr hari for you know approaching us and we are able to touch you know get him and he said instantly he said okay why not so we can have it have that so mr hari ayappan belongs to the tsm mba class of 2000 uh, he's a director head of data technology and analytics delight global financial advisory india private limited Uh, Mr Hari heads the data technology analytics uh, practice at Delight based out of Mumbai he has over 18 years of global experience in analytics technology and innovation working with various organizations in India and, and the US he is an accomplished leader with a focus on building high performing teams and a rich experience in leading large offshore practices his expertise spans multiple emerging technologies including advanced analytics artificial intelligence internet of things intelligent automation those are the buzzwords now you might know hari has partnered with uh, teams across geographies and believes in bringing together the best talent to find and deliver the right solution and insights at the right time he is a strong believer of open innovation and works closely with various delight firm, member firms academia and alliances and various analytical in, analytics initiatives hari holds a btech degree in mechanical engineering from university of calicut and mba from tehraja school of management madurai and ms degree in industrial engineering from university of alabama so thank you very much kari once again so over to you thank you so much uh, dr balaji um, it's my privilege uh, you know thanks to uh, dr samasevam uh, uh, vrs team director um, dr balaji who has been constantly in touch with me um, dr gautam and dr vignesh who you know i was able to connect as well um, and more importantly you know congratulations to all all of you Uh, for being uh, part of uh, TSM um, corridors that I have walked and uh, I still cherish. Um, so yeah, it's it's crazy times, right? I mean, um, I, I realized realized how our uh, lives have turned total. Um, so my little daughter, she was annoyed one day and uh, she was quiet. Um, so I actually told her, "You're on mute." Um, you know, it's a, it's a sign of the times, right? You know, we really um, go along with it, but. i mean there is a silver lining in all this and um, you know we will get through this and there will be a lot of opportunities for everyone i think you're in a very crucial period of um, um, your your life to uh, mold a lot of things so um, so with that uh, let me uh, um, just get on to uh, again don't worry about the agenda it's just a direction of travel um, but broadly um, just an introduction um, in methodology and analytics um, a couple of uh, business use cases and uh, and of course a little about uh, you know what we do in um, uh, at deloitte analytics and uh, and maybe ending with a little of on the near term outlook on analytics so again it, i would like this to be an interactive session um, so you know I, i don't wait till the end of the presentation you know, feel free to uh, uh, provide your inputs as well um a little about the topic right so why is uh, why do we why did i choose the art of uh, um analytics as a topic so you know more uh, the technology i mean in my point of view there's a lot of it's become a commodity right you can you, you have information everywhere right so people can learn new skills you know you can it's like napoleon theory like if you put enough energy into something then you uh, will um, have the output which is disproportional to what you've put in so people can spend time and learn a lot learn a lot of things and that's what a lot of people in my team are also doing right now in terms of uh, upskilling themselves in a lot of technologies and so on what really matters is creative problem solving and what you need now is um, uh, to differentiate yourself you uh, i mean it's a cliche to say out of the box but you really need to think about um, solving problems smartly and uh, identify you know which is the best option rather than just going with your structured uh, way of thinking and uh, i'd like to also add that you need to connect the dots so it's a very you know philosophical thought but you know you need to have peripheral view in terms of what's happening around you and being you know agile in terms of uh, you know getting on to new stuff or uh, and it relates to the problems solving so quickly i'll uh, tell you a story most of you or some of you would have definitely heard this so um, you know those who have not heard you know it's a puzzle so if you can give me an answer that'll be great so quickly there is a you know farmer who had borrowed money from a money lender a wicked money lender a pro proverb 
wicket money lender and then um, he is not able to pay so the money lender said you know let me marry your daughter then i will write off your uh, debt um and uh, they were really you know horrified listening to that and then um, money lender said okay let's do let's fate let fate decide this i'll uh, they were walking on a you know pebble laden path and they said i'll pick two stones right uh, a black stone and a white pebble um, and i'll put this in the money bag if you pick up uh, a white pebble then you will you'll be you let free you be um, let go so he picked up two stones and and the girl noticed that both of them were black stones right um so they what 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 could she do she could do three things she could either refuse to um take the stone she could either um, you know um tell that he is cheating or um she could say that uh, you know um i'll sacrifice myself and you know go ahead with it so these are the three options and she had to choose what can anyone um tell me what other possibilities are how did she get out of this just 10 seconds given the time that we had yeah so again um so she picked up one black stone and accidentally dropped it into the path of uh, the pebbles right so what was remaining was the other black stone and uh, naturally the outcome is you know it seems that she's picked up um, um sorry the what remains is uh, uh, the white stone the natural outcome is that she's picked up the right uh, pebble so instead of you know trying to vex over what you uh, you know problem you need to find out what is the there is always a solution that's what i've learned in in, in my life for everything so just going on to that uh, experiences from what my life and i'm there have been a lot of distinguished folks and i um, but from i've just tried to uh, squeeze out the juice from what i've learned so far and hopefully this is uh, useful to you every personality is different but you know these are some characteristics which will keep you in good stead um, while you work right and in life i guess so first is communication we i mean like i said there's a lot of people will think i am technology competent you know but unless you are able to communicate and tell the other person what um, you mean your credibility is diminished immensely if you don't communicate properly right i seen that in action a lot of times when people who are really good at technical aspects they don't really um, sell the idea so to speak and then they fall flat um so how much you argue that you know it's not a big part communication is important ownership um it, it, again if i look at my team right i'll pick around three or four people who if there's a, um, a job that you know is really really important crucial to the success i know who to pick because i know that end of the day it will be delivered in good quality and you know on time so that's because they have ownership of you know what they're doing it can be from any small thing to a large thing but once you commit to something you need to really be uh, owning that right attitude i you know that it's a given you need to have positive attitude um, especially in these times you know where there's a lot of things that um, the headwinds um, and there you need to really say that i i, I can get over it i can do a lot of good things um, the other favorite of mine is punctuality right um and that's crucial i mean as a culture i think we really have taken for granted that you know time um, you know we we will go with our time but you have to respect other people by you know uh, being punctual i can't stress enough of how much that will do good for you if you are punctual um even in small thing if you practice that right um attire right um Uh, i mean um, mr sakriya who i call uh, fondly as sakriya uncle um, you know he I've, i've never seen him um, he looks always sharp in when he's formally dressed and and that goes back to the his um, i know my dad if i wear some uh, something which is not really good for a formal he'll give me a hard stare um, it really um, i remember my first day in tsm or the interview in tsm i walked in with a you know maybe a silk blue shirt shiny blue shirt and and jeans and then the interviewer asked me where is the party um so i mean that was really a, you know starting of uh, you know understanding that you really it's your image right you need to keep up your attire and um, you know they don't teach you in, uh, in general textbooks but that's very important 
um, having fun um, is crucial and not uh, going too much but you know you know the drill right it's uh, it's part of your life i mean at the end of the day all of us are humans uh, we need to really um, blow off some steam sometimes um don't fear to fail that's you know i think people who try fail so if you if you try that if you fail it means you're trying so you need to really um, you know being afraid of failure and you should take up new things adaptability so i was not talking to uh, dr samar simam about uh, you know my work in, in in the us when i was uh, studying there um, you know he he had done his phd from there and i i, I did my masters um, so i was working for a, a center there and you know um, it was during the 911 and and all of a sudden i i lost all my funding right because i was working um with the army uh, an army base and no international students were there so there's nothing you could do so you know um i took up jobs in as a you know um, in the police department but it was a glorified like what we call as a watchman in india you know the, the freezing cold you need to you know look um, report back on any incidents happening uh, but again you need to really see what um and I, and i've been out of a job for a year when you know i went back to kerala we had a farm i was looking at alternate um you know things to do like um, and, um, and then i realized i need to get back into industry um and then a lot of people helped me i mean just being adaptive to you know and learning new technologies and, and so on so hopefully uh, that uh, resonates with you uh, but i thought i'll start with this a little bit getting into the analytics right um i'll pause any any thoughts comments or, or you reserve this is i mean this is more uh, generic topic but let's get into the analytics um i don't have to tell the mba students about frederick taylor or you know he you know he is a, uh, largely acclaimed as the father of scientific management um you know, he had done a lot of studies in time uh, management and subsequently henry ford um hired him um so there's a lot of um, you know analysis that happened way in the uh, 19th century um this particular one is a good story that i thought i'll share with you again is uh, there was a cholera outbreak in in london in um, 1854 um where about 600 people died in a couple of weeks and you know so there's uh, this doctor whose name was john snow who um mapped the incidence of uh, you know cholera uh, and 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 was able to visualize that most of the cases were around a certain uh, water pump right um, in a street called broad street um, i mean you really need to look at the data and look at um, you know what you're looking at to make sure that you know we find the answer to this and he found the answer in a uh, water pipe and they subsequently removed that pipe which saved a lot of lives um, so analytics visualization has been around for a quite quite some time um i would i would argue that even you know uh, it's as uh, old as mankind when you know just looking at uh, markings on the caves and stuff like that but you know it's a good uh, good way to look at uh, um, patterns and uh, data talking about data again um uh, this is again a question for you all um w- w- what do you see in this data data is not always you know it's, it's not given to you in a very good form yeah go ahead i can see someone uh, there someone wants to answer this couple of uh, they have how they have given the future data 2084 that's 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 brilliant yeah but the uh, last name uh, was same in the 89 sir for the year yeah again great um so it could be the same person and especially looking at the two dates i mean consider this as a you know billing information it could be the same person but you know entered as different names and it could be a case of fraud as well so data is not a um you know it's you will find that 80 i mean probably you know it but 80% of time you are working with data to make it uh, ready for analysis right um and um, you know you, you, nowadays you have a lot of software where you can you can uh, you have rules to find out you know and um, throw out the uh, quality of the data report and, and so on but this is huge so you all heard about garbage in garbage out and this is um, is exactly what what 
you won't get really good insights if you're working with uh, data that's not uh, really massaged. So just going on into the uh, architecture, um, I, I want to set the stage because you know, like I said, data is the foundation and uh, and the building block for all uh, analysis. Um, then you have the translation, uh, you know, preparation. So, for example, or what I would call the logic, right? So even if you're building a model, you, you, you know, there's a, whether decision tree or whether it's a you know random forest or it's a segmentation clustering methods, um, or even in you know some fraud analytics, whether it's rule-based segmentation, whatever. So you have a lot of things that you translate data with, and the key is then to get the insights out of it. Now that's where you know really the uh, the art, I mean, you really need to focus on um, what you're looking at. And then um, people want insights. If you give them all the data, I mean, obviously they want, but the key is to get um, actionable insights out of the data. That's the uh, main uh, component of uh, analytics, right? Um, and to help that, we have, um, if you're taking any data science uh, project, um, you have a certain number of steps that, that are uh, usually uh, recommended. So this is called the cross-industry standard for data mining. Um, again, maybe you may be familiar with this, but it all starts with an understanding of the business, right? Um, you, need to, you need to be aware of what the business question is. You know, am I trying to find out, you know, um, there might be some attrition. Am I, am I trying to find out the reasons behind those attrition or, um, you know, uh, it could be any business uh, question, but you need to be clear on defining that. And then the data understanding, uh, just before jumping into the data, it's not always that you jump into the data and start working on it. You need to understand you know, what are the sources of data that you need to pull out. You know, it could come from point of sale, it could come from um, invoices, it could come from financial information. So multiple sources of data and you need to, um, have a clear understanding of, uh, you know, what data you're going to work with. The data preparation, I told you, could be, I'll, I'll go a little bit into more of that, um, but um, that's also a key skill that data analytics uh, folks, you know, they could use uh, tools like SQL or Oracle or Informatica. And, and, and there's multiple tools that you work with in terms of um, preparing the data. You could have a modeling, um, it could be a simple descriptive model or it could be a predictive model. Um, but again, you need to see what is the best uh, uh, model that you need to use for uh, converting those data into information, right? Um, evaluation, obviously, you need to monitor and then you need to deploy. Um, so there are cycles in this, you know, sometimes you need to go back to the business understanding and then you know, come back to um, the modeling and so on. But generally this is the framework for uh, um, uh, data analytics and modeling and data science uh, projects. Um, I thought I'd share with you some of the uh, uh, business cases uh, to give you a flavor of uh, you know what um, analytics uh, can support. Um, so I, um, let's take some customer segmentation example, right? I mean, you don't have to go too far or too fancy um, my mother had actually started, uh, you know, when she was 65 years old, she started a um, stitching center, right? So it was basically, you know, they had uh, um, clothes, dresses and, uh, and stitching and she was able to employ about six people. Um, but she asked me, you know, Hari, you know, what are you doing? You know, do you're working on analytics and can you help me find out who my customers are? I'm struggling with it, right? I don't understand because... Uh, a lot of people come into my uh, into my center and I really don't know how to maybe reach out to them or maybe reach out to more people who are like them. Um, so it's a simple case, right? If you look at the business understanding, the, the, the question was, um, how do my customer segments look? And, um, you know, how do I you know, position more um, uh, materials to attract the right customers, right? Um, so, I mean, there they could be, you know, a needs-based uh, survey that's sent out or, or, or cards that, that are, you know, um, collected when customers come in with their, um, you know, all the details. Um, so we know, you know, what their uh, typical age, age are, what their, you know, some of them may need immediate service, some of them may need 
uh, you know, um, a variety of uh, dresses in the store. Some of them may even need good parking in front of it. So the, there's different people who whose priorities are different. Um, so you know, basically, you get those data and then you um, use one of the segmenting methodologies. Uh, there are numerous methodologies. I mean, um, so let's take uh, you know uh, K means which number of you define number of clusters as K, and see how you know um, you can segment those customers. And identify, um, so basically it's a method where, you know, within segments they are most alike and across segments they are most varied. Um, so there would be a segment who are probably younger, um, you know, working um, women and who needs like, you know, and their profile and their needs are different. Um, so it's very powerful, you know, once you have the data, once you have the, uh, you know, methodology and once you have, it's very powerful to provide the right insights, right? You would, you would otherwise be sending mass, uh, mass campaigns to people, and you know it would probably waste your money. Um, so that's one example, right? Um, and um, uh, the other one uh, you all would be familiar again is, um, you know, how does Netflix recommend um, movies that you like? Now, a lot of I watch a lot of Netflix right now, and you know. And, from working from home, right? So, uh, how do you, um, uh, how do we, how do they, sorry, someone was asking. Okay, so how do we, um, you know, identify um, uh, based on like, based on historical uh, view of uh, view, your views, Netflix is, suppose, is, is able to, you know, uh, whether it's an a priori algorithm or they use an algorithm to basically identify what your preferences are and um, target those, uh, you know, most likely to be watched uh, movies. Uh, so again, it gets better hit rate and, and so on. Again, it follows the same process um, or, it, or it could be for product bundling, right? So if you go to, I don't know, maybe some retail store, the, you, you see, you know, uh, a toothpaste with um, a toothbrush, you know, I mean, obviously that's a very intuitive thing. Uh, there's this famous story about uh, beer and diapers, which probably you, you know and or you'll be reading about, which most dads who go to buy diapers buy beer as well. But that's, again, uh, from an analysis. I mean, it's uh, it's not pulled from, uh, from the clouds. So uh, all these are, uh, you know, um, analytics process. But again, I like to stress that, you know, you need to... If anyone can do the modeling part, well, not anyone, but anyone who's trained good, well enough can do the modeling part. But it's it's to marry the business question with the insights that that gives a lot of uh, impetus to your um, the what you have to offer, right? Again, another example of customer churn. So you know, if if you've been a Vodafone customer and you know, you've switched on to an Airtel and, and you know they they really know. They want to know how it uh, will other people also you know switch or if there's a different um, um, different posture of a competitor, what would be the impact for yourself? So uh, customer churn model again is very important. Um, again, these are customer examples, but you know this can be in supply chain. It can um, you know where you, you you're doing a procurement uh, analysis and you want to find out you know how I can um, Make sure that I reduce the um, accounts receivables in, in a you know for a uh, for a company. So this again, this is I'm trying to give you a methodology here in terms of you know what the process of analytics would really look like. Uh, so again, um, just to step back a bit, um, this is fundamental anyway. So but you know I thought I'd let you know what what the different types of analytics uh, are. So we have the descriptive, which is, you know, what happened uh, question, right? So, um, you know, it could be a sales sales analysis, right? So in the past month, what was the sales and, you know, um, and visualizing that uh, trends and, and, and so on, um, right? Um, then we have the predictive analytics, uh, which again, you, you, you're aware now, um, you know, uh, how what is likely to happen based on the past experience and so on. Um, um, so you know, how do I choose uh, who 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 is uh, um, worthy of a credit or not? 
right? It, it depends on a lot of things. So then it will basically uh, predict um, who is likely to repay your loans and, and so on. So that's that's the kind of analysis that's used in predictive. Prescriptive again is um, uh, so when I was in, in, um, again in Alabama, so there was a, a project that I did which basically needed to find out how many how many checkout counters you needed you need to have in the cafeteria. So how do we um, how do we know how many counters even in a you know large retail store lines or something like that um, to meet the uh, demands of the uh, crowd? Right. If you have too less, it's uh, it's going to be a, a chaos. If you have too more too much, then it's going to be a waste of money. So you need to have an optimal uh, things. You can do simulation. You can do you know what if for other cases and, and so on. Uh, forensics again um, is an analytics where you kind of use uh, you know the AI, AI you know can do image processing and uh, you know and identify if is, is a, you know maybe even if parts are going to fail uh, and, and train some models to um, you know uh, identify which uh, which ones uh, are likely to be anomalies. <coughs> so broadly, these are the um, various types of analytics. Um, just going to uh, my uh, my team. Um, so we are about um, you know um, seventy plus uh, people in, in in the data technology and analytics team, uh, which focuses on financial advisory, right and. Uh, the reason I want to tell you about this is uh, to see, you know, uh, in the industry, what what are the types of uh, skills plus, you know, what what are the general. Uh, so again, uh, let me go to the slide and then I'll I'll tell you some more about it. So we have a team that does data management, like I spoke about, um, and that's pretty much the bread and butter of uh, a lot of analytics, the, the analytics team itself. Because without that fundamental layer, we cannot, cannot proceed to other, uh, at least the um, analytics part. So we have people working, like I said, on Tableau, Oracle, uh, and then visualization through, uh, sorry, uh, we have people working on data management like uh, SQL and Oracle and, and Informatica. And we also have people with uh, visualization skills along with the um, insights, the mind for insights, right? Um, the advanced analytics team is more of uh, data scientists. Um, so their background is probably, um, you know, well, let me uh, step back here. So most of the team are uh, quantity, have quantitative background. Um, and it's not, I'm not a big believer that, you know, um, I am a mechanical engineer. So I, and, and, and I, I feel um, passionate about analytics. And, um, most of the people in the team, you know, they have computer science engineering or IT or quantitative. Um, yeah, they have some sort of uh, computer background, which I think, you know, not it's not really required if, if, if the person is, uh, you know, they can learn. Uh, but it just gives a layer of, you know, they have some background kind of thing. Um, the advanced analytics team has a lot of uh, data science folks, right, which is uh, more on... Um, you know, statistics and uh, modeling, and they, they you know, it's more for pointed business questions, okay? So they, they answer questions, you know, uh, where, where should I locate my store? Or, you know, like I said, um, you know, what's the product mix that needs to be done? Or uh, how is the pricing going to affect this XX? So they, they work on the modeling part, and they use tools like SAS, um, SPSS, uh, Python, um, um, whatever, all traits is a you know workflow analytics uh, tool. Um, so just just to I, I started my career with SPSS, uh, using a lot of SPSS to do a lot of things. But things are you know now uh, at least uh, you know there's a lot of like you know open source uh, software and, and so on to do this. Um, we we of course have the big data. So you, you know if you want to analyze. Uh, maybe Twitter feeds or Facebook posts or whatever. Then we have people who work on Hadoop technologies, um, automation, um, especially in professional service firm. Right, more eighty percent of uh, processes can be automated, and I'll probably show you a video if we have time on uh, on, on one of the opt automation work that you've done. Um, and again, tools like Automation Anywhere, UiPath, Blue Prism, um, and then maybe you know customized scripts using uh, Python. 
So all these can be used for automate or our automation uh, work. Solution development is more your front end uh, technologies, right? So we build uh, web portals, you know. Um, so th th that's the team that does uh, some. Of, again, these are not in silos. People, any any projects, these people come together to build um, assets and solutions. So just wanted to give you a feel of the different technologies uh, that we use. Any questions on this? Any? Just take a pause. Uh, Fair enough. So let's let's move then. Again, this is really close to my heart. Um, uh, so so, like I said, most of the analytics folks they they're very good at technology and you know tools and, and, and data management and, and things like that. But really, you need to ask the right business questions um, to provide the right insights. That's the key, right? Um, without that, I mean, if I give you a data set and, and you jump on it, then I you know, I, I'd probably be um, discouraged because everything ha starts from, uh, the, the thinking starts from the business end of things, right? Um, that's that's the key takeaway from this. So basically, although your um, execution is from left to right, as you see, your thinking needs to be from right to left, right? So that's the key. I, I, I know you kind of uh, understand this. Uh, so again, I am on hotspot. Uh, like I said, uh, very uncommon that we have an internet outage here. But if I'm trying to uh, to you, so again, this is a uh, for a retail chain where you know they uh, they they under they felt that you know the employees had uh, were not really they were discontent with uh, with the, some of the stores. Um, so, you know, there was data in terms of, you know, just sending out surveys to, or, you know, looking at um, data from their posts, actually a social media posts uh, on, you know, places like Indeed, you know, uh, where the employees um, posted their uh, feelings about uh, the, the retail store. Um, so that's, you know, you needed to do text mining, right? You have a lot of wordy stuff and, you know, you need to, um, filter the the uh, sentiments out of this. Uh, so, you know, actually, spaces was used. They have a module in spaces for this uh, to kind of group um, some of the themes and then come up with uh, an analysis to give back to the business. Um, and and they were they, they even found out that you know there's some theft happening in some of the stores, for example, which is a risk um, issue, right? And um, so. So let me just uh, take you, if you can see um, my screen again, I'm uh, toggling to another. Uh, can you see this uh, dashboard? Yeah, just, yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, you know, um, this is a Tableau dashboard. This is anonymized data. And uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, um, so, so those of you who have worked with Tableau, uh, it's a very powerful tool in terms of, you know, dynamically looking at, uh, uh, information. So again, the the engine behind this is data, and you need to really have good data to come out with uh, you know some of the visualizations, and this in turn gives 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 insights, right? Um, uh, so so for example, let me it won't take too long. So it gives me feedback uh, about how many people talked about workplace environment, um, and I can look at it by uh, let's say rating, right? I, I want to look at people who rated poorly. Uh, oh, well, here's someone saying job is absolute garbage. The harder you work, the more work they give you, um, so on. So you really get to feel, you know, the real pulse of the, the people from, um, you know, the sentiment analysis uh, per se. Um, so again, like I said, this is really powerful. And, uh, uh, you know, there are other tools like Power BI, Click sense um, that you use. Uh, this is an instrument where you can convert some of the data into um, meaningful insights for the um, business stakeholders. Yeah. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Just uh, skimming through time. Um, procurement analytics again is an example, right? So um, one of our uh, global wine companies, uh, they wanted to 
understand um, the vendor, um, the invoices, and uh, whether there's a spend leakage. I mean, we're talking about uh, uh, a huge Hari, conglomerate. Was the slide show, Mr. Hari? Sorry for interruption. Oh, sorry, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for uh, letting me know. Um, so, so basically, you know, it's a huge uh, organization with uh, data spread across multiple countries. So, disparate source of data, and you need to first unify those and, you know, you look at uh, creating a database, just uh, bringing together information that you want and then analyzing it. Um, I have a um, demo, but maybe I can share this later. Um, so basically, you know, what it does is, is look at, look, look at, looks at vendors across different geographies. They, they were able to unify the data and get insights of, and, and, and save millions, right? And basically, you know, they're looking at uh, multiple uh, locations. Yeah. So uh, again, this is another um, automation one. Um, so um, so basically, what we, we we had a problem, right? So we had a, a manual task of you know getting financial information from uh, kind of a, a research uh, tool. Um, called perfect information, and we need to co collate, uh, uh, you know, categorize those information, and then uh, tag those information. So, there's multiple processes. Which, uh, when you're talking about doing this for nine thousand companies, um, you know, like I mentioned, we are from the financial advisory. We have um, we have to work with a lot of financial information, and this took, you know, this was done historically in a manual kind of manner. Um, so the team really worked on um, uh, a Python script to automate the whole process, and uh, it was it was done much much uh, time is money for uh, for a, for you know business as well. So basically, we re we reduced uh, um, and we saved about twenty thousand um, dollars. You know, just using. Um, 200 hours of work where, you know, there was initially a scope scope for about 800 hours. Um, so, I mean, this is an example where you can automate uh, things. And again, for those uh, who are trying their hands at uh, Python and, and, and things, you can look at um, which areas that you can automate, right? Even, um, um, even in, in, in our TSM, you can look at, you know, what are the best um, ways that you can uh, Try out some mini project, uh, so to speak, and, uh, and and get a lot of uh, experience and uh, efficiencies into it. Uh, again, this is a um, solution development uh, solution. Basically, you know, we used to have um, time entry is hugely important, right? Because uh, the billing is by the hour and so on. So we need to make sure there's no revenue leakage um, if you're not putting in. Um, your entries of work into a time system, um, but it was done a lot of in a lot of Excel sheets, and, and we have six service lines within uh, financial advisory: um, mergers and acquisition, uh, uh, transactional services, forensics, valuations, uh, corporate finance. So we have multiple service lines, and we have we have 400 people. You know, Excel gets really um, overloaded if you. Um, so we build a, like a front end where people can actually go in and enter their time. And it's connected through the back end where, uh, you know, uh, on a server where we can actually run the analysis and um, provide reports to look at uh, for, for management uh, at, a, at almost the click of button, right? Um, so there's a huge potential in, you know, in, in developing solutions as well. And you may need a lot of this in um, uh, the front end uh, part of it as well. Okay. Um, so um, I'd like to um, probably close uh, by talking about a few uh, near-term outlook in, in analytics, right? So we um, just to summarize, and then we 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 spoke about you know key um, soft skills you can make in terms of what you need to be um, looking at uh, as you enter the workforce, um, and. Uh, we looked at some of the analytics frameworks and then some of the business cases um, and um, you know some of uh, a demo for, for that uh, uh, sentiment analysis, but multiple. I mean, I can, I can use a whole day to share 
multiple things in in a big data or a, um, and so on. But the key is that data analytics people are um, you know scarce. Uh, there's a huge shortage of uh, skills um, and 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 the right mindset, um, right? So that is uh, hugely important and. If you really go into the analytics world, uh, you will you know, still find it to be the sexiest job of the century. Uh, there is so much to do, and it's uh, like I said, I was started off with SPSs doing descriptive analytics, and I mean now we are you know talking about uh, AI and uh, AI and cognitive and um, Internet of Things, the connectivity, all that is you know hugely uh, interesting, right? And um, so so um, even if you're not in the core analytics space you will um, you know um, headbutt with a lot of um, analytics so basically it's always good to uh, you know understand analytics and you know get more exposure to that um, as you go through your uh, program um, one trend that you are um, seeing is basically you know we we, we had uh, people who are hardcore uh, programmers and you know um, and Modelers and there's less dependency in, that's going into the uh, under the hood basically, and people are uh, you know the business users are using analytics more with uh, self-service tools and, and so on. So Alteryx, for example, is you know you could drag and drop uh, you know the data integration work and and so on. So there's a lot of uh, wider adoption of business users. So that gives a lot of opportunity uh, for um, the technical folks as well because they have to build these. Uh, tools plus the business uh, people where they need to work on, uh, they can easily get analytics work done. Uh, well, easily uh, as in, uh, you know, with the domain knowledge. Um, I don't have to tell you that there's a whole growth in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, and like I said, a lot of uh, process improvements are happening using uh, AI. Um, and there's, uh, you know, that's a whole new topic Right, but that is the area that. Uh, so my son is doing. Um, he's now in second year of computer engineering. I tried to, I tried my best to put him in mechanical, but he took um, uh, computer engineering, and uh, I was surprised. So when when I was in uh, engineering, there was three core streams like mechanical, electrical, and civil, and that's probably it. And others were just uh, you know, I mean, there, there's others as well, but the there are three fundamental. Um, uh, courses in engineering. So now you have uh, computer engineering with AI, computer engineering with business analysis. Even within computer engineering, you have so much of specialization. So that's the speed that things are going. Um, but uh, luckily, I told him if you take computer engineering, just take the basic, because then you can learn uh, things later, right? But uh, there's a huge uh, demand that's just um, just waiting to come through. Um, now, data, there's a lot of, um, you know, difficulty in managing data. One is there's a lot of data coming in. It's not like olden times where you just had one um, enterprise data warehouse, or, you know, and now there's multiple uh, channels of data, you know, you could have social media data, customer data, product invoices. There's a lot of uh, plus given that, you know, you need to have security of that data. Uh, the privacy aspects of there's a lot of talk about uh, data privacy, uh, data security. Um, so that's all. That's becoming a lot of challenge to the company. So you have chief data officers uh, within companies that uh, you know that's probably a role that uh, some of you who are interested in this can uh, go after, right? Um, so that's another trend. Um, like okay, I talked about data privacy and security. Uh, interconnectivity becomes critical and. Um, uh, you, you know, smart metering or, um, you know, there's like uh, Internet of Things, there's data everywhere, um, smart manufacturing. Um, so if you have, um, uh, you know, multiple data across multiple areas and then uh, a manufacturing plant needs to, you know, make sure that everything is connected and, um, and, and glean out insights out of it, then you really, um, you know, that's the area that you really need to focus on. Um, in terms of you know, there are, again there are a lot of tools and you know there's got MindSpace and um, Siemens has got MindSpace and other uh, a lot of other tools as well. Uh, but IoT is also a key uh, thing um, 
because of the 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 Spurgeon data. Okay, I think I will stop here. Um, yeah, I think we are on time. So uh, we have a couple questions. Yeah. So can we take the questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, sure. If you free, the, uh, yeah. Can you stop the screen or share share screen so that you know? Oh, sorry. See. Here you go. Yeah. Sure. Here you go. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so the first question is from uh, Pranam Murthy. Uh, he says that, you know, I want to, you know, come to the data analyst field. What should I do now? Where should I, how should I start with? Yeah. So, yeah. So I think your uh, answer is a new question. So if you want to get into data analytics field, you know, you need to work and understand a lot of data, right? That's the main thing. Um, because like I said, that is, without that, I mean, you can have, know all the tools of analysis, but if you don't know how to work with data, um, you probably will not, uh, you know, be satisfied with what you're doing. Um, so the fundamental thing is, you know, you learn uh, tools like SQL and, you know, how you can uh, combine data, and cleanse data, integrate data. So I think that would be your first step in terms of uh, becoming a data analyst. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm not a true believer that you need to have some really hard quantitative background, but if you can, um, I'm hoping you really um, have started on that path. So my answer would be, yeah, I think uh, work on the data. And then, like I said, always look at the business um, and then you'll be thrilled to see what you can get out of the data. And then that will, uh, you know, that'll lead to a lot of other uh, experiments, if you like. Sorry, I cannot hear you. Yeah, so thanks. Yeah, I can hear you. Bharat sir has this question. All right, do I have to take any other certifications courses? You know, apart from the MBA, which is pursuing to make the career in business analytics. Uh, any skills or certification courses in which you recommend so that you yeah. know that's most important. Yeah, it's helpful, right? I mean, uh, yeah, you, you should know to do the job. That's the first uh, certification. The second, like, you know, this, again, you have to choose which, like, if you're working on cloud, you, you have Microsoft Azure certification, you know, um, and, and uh, you know, if you're working with SaaS, there is a SaaS uh, integration certification. Um, so in your area, there would definitely be, uh, uh, or if you're, uh, you know, either AWS or whatever, big data, you have certification. Um, it's always good to be certified. Um, so my, my again, like I think my uh, thing is, yeah. If you have time and money, you should get certified. Um, yeah, I think that gives a credibility, a stamp of credibility for you. That's so cool. uh, don't take my word that you know. Just do. I think you should take a certification. Is my answer. Absolutely. Uh, this is a question from Anushua Basu. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, I am from a non-engineering background, so. Do we have a career uh, in the big you know, big data, data business analytics? So that's what it is. Will it work for me? Basically, I'm a non-engineer. Do I have any prospects in this field? Yeah. So like I said, a doctor really found out what the, where the call rest starts, right? So it's not your background, it's your mental, my mindset. Um, so anyone who who's keen to learn it, um, again, I'll be very honest with you. My programming skills are pathetic. So I, like I said, I'm a mechanical engineer. I really don't, uh, you know, I shouldn't have fit into an analytics profile if I thought that I will not. Uh, but it's my uh, mind to explore and, you know, like a, to investigate that really helps me as an analytics person, right? So there was this uh, question that, you know, people, uh, I was working in Houston and then um, the, the company that I was working was sending, sending huge, direct mails across all uh, zip codes in uh, US. So, um, you know, I, I looked at a, um, earlier there was a tool called MapInfo, uh, which is again, a lot of users can use it. It's not rocket science. Um, and then I, I kind of found out that certain, only certain block groups were responding to that campaign. So why send the whole, I mean, you're wasting money for the rest of those uh, segments. Um, so it's it's a in, in, I mean and and it's becoming easier right it's it's becoming easier to um, work with um, tools in analytics so it's more of the mentality and the art that really matters in in, in analytics 
Uh, but 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 if you're hardcore, uh, you know, developer in .NET, and, and I'll take my words back because that's you need to be you need to know um, real good coding to do that. But there are areas in analytics where you can really shine. Um, and and one more thing I want to add is you need to have functional knowledge. So if you can work in a company with, uh, let's say, energy company or a financial company, and understand what the process is and understand where you're a subject matter expert, that will go a long way in kind of helping. Uh, um, Get uh, get you uh, uh, a lot in analytics as well. Absolutely. Uh, Yogesh, I have this question in the sense, you know, what kind of qualities does a MBA graduate should have to make it a career in data analytics? You no, know, you said the you know analytics is one. How does an MBA you know, fit into it? Right. So, what kind of qualities he should have? He or she should have? Yeah. I, I, so again, I think MBAs have an edge, right? So, if, if I look at my uh, team. Uh, there is about six percent of percentage of MBAs in it, and uh, I think it's too low. The reason being, um, you know, MBAs can grasp a lot of like, uh, you know, like I said earlier, right? If it's um, in HR or analytics or anything, they can understand um, the theory and concepts behind a lot of things, and that makes the analysis more stronger. Um, and again, like I said, communication is key. You need to really be able to. There, there is a lot of. Uh, gap uh, in terms of uh, people who create the insights and people who talk the insights and there's you need to really convey what insights are there so i think mbas can really get into that area where they can um, be, they can really summarize the insights that are that is out of uh, any um, analytics work and provide it to management um, so that is a key area that you should look at as well where uh, you know you really filter it out and present to the uh, for the business stakeholders that you, and this is what recommend. This is what that you need to do. This is a question from Mr. Afsal Samir. Uh, uh, he, he would like to specialize in marketing, uh, right? So he says he's you know, asking the question to you: How analytics is going to help for a marketing aspirant like me? Yeah. So that's what he's, uh, he's also saying that he currently he's doing a certification course on R and Python. Mm -hmm. So how yeah. it's going to help him? So, I mean, you probably are aware of marketing analytics, right? So, even in analytics, you're, you know, finance analytics, you're pointed to finance and there is, uh, you know, supply chain analytics, HR analytics. The marketing analytics is a huge, uh, it, most of the use cases or at least a couple of them, uh, like segmentation or, uh, you know, churn analytics, all that comes under, you know, marketing analytics and campaign analytics and so on. Um, so if you, I think it's good that you narrow your, um, you know, um, and uh, narrow your field into marketing analytics and then work uh, with your uh, foundation on that and then uh, with the analytics will definitely help you um, in that. Okay, this is a question from Danny. Uh, what do recruiters look, look up when recruiting for a job for uh, data analyst roles? Especially I'm a fresher. I don't have any experience. What kind of, you know, what they look for actually for the data analyst yeah. roles? So uh, I forgot the most important part in my key characteristics, which is integrity. So without that, none of those things that I told you, communication or, uh, you know, attitude, none of that will, will fly. So what, what I think good recruiters will look for is, uh, it doesn't, I mean, if you're honest to yourself and, tell, you know, tell them this is what I come with. And, uh, you know, I think willingness to learn is important, right? You need to, Show that you're willing to take on a lot of uh, lot of works work, but okay. Let's uh, there is a there are table stakes in terms of what skills you need for each role, right? If if I'm taking someone for big data, I I want to make sure that they know the big data technologies. Um, so at, at that level, I mean those become uh, the standard where you need to have. Let's say .NET C# -sharp for a development person. I cannot say that okay, you don't have you you have a good great attitude. You know, you're, I'm going to take you for that role. It's not going to happen. You need to have those technical skills as a base. The others that you can do is you know uh, as you grow in the firm. Um, yeah. So I think what you should do is look for the role that you want to start with. It could be like I said, it could be bad. Some of those that I listed uh, are uh, you know from my team, but you, if you look at any any organization, you will have something that really resonates with you in what you want to do. And then skill up yourself in, in those areas. Um, and with your MBA, that's a solid plus that you can really get into it. Thanks, Eddie. 
Now, this is a question from Pranav. Uh, actually, you know, just background. Uh, several of the faculty members are working for in the area of MSME, you know, Madurai and all these things. We have MSME clusters are there. And we are somewhere down the line, we plan to start a center of MSME excellence. Yeah. As a giving background. Some of the students are also working in this. He has a question for you. you know, particularly for the improvement of small businesses and micro enterprises, the problem is they don't have data at all. All right. How do we overcome that and help them? So, Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense, there is no clear past data. Is there? No, that's what it is. Yeah, How do yeah. we bring it? To so that, them, so? Yeah, that's great, right? I mean, that's the that's where most of the business in India is, right? So, um, and and like and that challenge is actually an opportunity for you all because, and uh, like I told you about my mother's business, it's it's, it's a small business, right? And, and uh, there was no data, but you can start collecting data and make it more formal, right? Bring a structure to the analytics, um, and, and like I said, you will get incremental benefits when you uh, when you implement some of the things that I just told you. I mean, in terms of you know, create that database. You know, it could be small. It could be uh, then you could have clusters of uh, similar industries and and have you could do benchmarking just to make sure things are uh, you know who's doing what and you know, what are the key uh, success factors. Um, so there is a whole window that will open to you when you start collecting the data. Uh, so I think some of you can take that initiative and say that you know I'm going to bring data into this and collect this data, and I'm going to you know you it will turn huge if you really do a good job at it. You you can actually you'll see a lot of other opportunities as well. Yeah. So this is the final question. Uh, Chaitanya needs your advice. Uh, right, he's confused that should I take a data analyst job, which is more you know fancy or sexy, whatever you say, that's most yeah. glamorous word, or is you know is, should I take a specialization related jobs like core finance, you know core operations or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, right. So he doesn't know. He needs your advice on that. What should I do? He's also interested in analytics field. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so I mean, the very fact that you're asking this question, um, so analytics is. Probably uh, you know in the horizon, right? I mean, it's not top of mind. So I think, I mean, I, I'm not the one to recommend. But if I were you, I would uh, take a core job first and then learn about the analytics, so that uh, you know uh, you get you get those core skills. Because it seems to me that you are uh, maybe solid in one of the core core areas, which is which is equally important, if not more. Yeah. That's the most mm -hmm. valuable advice you've got, Chaitanya. <laughs> That's fine. So thank you, Mr. Hari. Thank you very much. It's one hour almost, right? So you know, yeah. you're, you take us through the the particular. What I like is the process of the data analysis. You know, you all given some frameworks. What are the applications? After applications, which fit into various categories. Where do you fit in? And use cases. The real time screenshots are for those the data analysis outputs. That was amazing. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Hari. So please do stay connected. Uh, let me, you know, on behalf of the entire TS community, thank you very much. As I said, the director told, uh, once the situation becomes nor normal, please do visit our campus anytime. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's Gautam, a pleasure. Always. Something. Yeah. Gautam, you want to say something? Uh, thank you, Hari. I, thank you, Hari. It's actually a great uh, learning for all of us. And also, uh, for the information sake, uh, our, it is our first uh, alumni talk of this academic year. Newly batch are there. So we're very lucky that we got a um, person like you. So at least they, was, they should learn, they should know that uh, their legacy is that much great. Yeah. Thank you a lot. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so thank much. You, Mr. Thank you all. Thank you very Have much for your time once again. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you, students. Okay. It's missed.